evening. Police probing shooting death of Skittle on Durban Street. Government implemented measures to contain rising prices amid external shocks. Guyana to benefit from higher energy prices, levels of oil production, IDB. In the region, at least 17 dead in anti-government protests in southern Peru and internationally. Sri Lanka economy, President warns of top austerity measures. Welcome to another edition of Channel 2's Headline News Updates. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. We begin with an update of the bowl killing in the capital city yesterday. Police are investigating the shooting death of Anthony Charles, a 33-year-old laborer who was known as Skittle, which occurred on Durban Street in Working Ross, Georgetown, around 11.30 a.m. According to eyewitnesses, Charles and a friend, Dexter Lawrence, a 43-year-old laborer, were walking on Durban Street when a silver-gray old model Allian motor car bearing the fake registration number plate PVV5906 approached the duo from behind. Several shots were heard and Lawrence began to run, escaping injury before Charles fell to the ground. Lawrence received a bruise on his right lower hand, which he said was caused by a bullet. An eyewitness said that the shooter, described as a male wearing a dark colored hoodie, got out of the car, went up to Charles and discharged several rounds at him before quickly getting back into the car and driving away at high speed. The body of Anthony Charles was found with several gunshot wounds. Several spent shells, wireheads, and metal fragments were found at the scene. The police are treating this as a murder case, and several persons have been questioned. They have also determined that the registration number of the car is fake. Charles' body is at the Memorial Gardens funeral home awaiting a post-mortem examination. No arrests have yet been made. The investigation is ongoing, and police are urging anyone with information about the shooting to come forward. Also, in other news, in a recent development, the Nigerian national who attacked the presidential official residence at State House almost a month ago, Bethel Chenzi, remains hospitalized under police guard at the Georgian Public Hospital. According to reliable sources, Chenzi is conscious, oriented, stable, and able to communicate well. He is also no longer on a ventilator and is being treated for a wound by the orthopedic team at the hospital. However, it should be noted that people, including Chen Zi's wife, are still not allowed to visit him at the public hospital. Now we turn our attention to financial news. In the face of rising global inflation, Caribbean countries like Guyana have taken measures to keep prices low and assist their economies in growing despite external shocks. According to the Inter-American Development Bank's December 2022 quarterly Caribbean economics issue, the Guyana government has implemented a suite of measures to contain rising prices amid these external shocks. These measures include reducing the excise tax and fuel to zero and absorbing the additional operating costs on electricity and water tariffs, the allocation of $4.8 million for the purchase and distribution of fertilizers to farmers to reduce operating costs, distributing one-time cash grants for households in rural interior and riverine communities, and increasing public assistance payments to vulnerable. The report also noted that the government has expanded support to provide lifelong assistance for people with permanent disabilities and has increased the old age pension to benefit approximately 65,000 seniors. The report also noted that these challenges have inspired regional leaders to promote longer-term regional solutions to dependence on imports from outside the region and mentions the CARICOM 25 by 2025 initiative. The government of Guyana is actively monitoring and implementing measures to ease the burdens on its most vulnerable citizens. It is taking direct action to keep prices from rising as it navigates these external shocks and higher commodity prices on the world market. Stick around after the break, opening ceremony held to mark the beginning of a new year for the judiciary and 2023 budget date announced.
Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinveld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton and Camp Street. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Good girl forget things. Good girl! Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for doing surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fractured my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Mizu Francois is the chocolate paradise of Guyana. From the moment you enter our stores, you're welcomed by the sweet aroma of Belgian chocolate pastries and other artisanal treats handmade by our European trained chef. However, Maison Francois is more than just chocolate. We serve lunch, dinner, afternoon tea and even Sunday morning mimosa brunch. Our convenient location at 133 Thomas Street Kitty makes it the perfect place to take that special someone or to take home a little sweetness. Treat yourself with the taste of Paris in the heart of Georgetown, only at Maison Francois. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 46 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. Welcome back. Just days into the new year, the senior minister within the office of the president with responsibility for finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, has announced that budget for 2023 will be presented on Monday, January 16th. The government has consulted with various groups such as the private sector, government agencies, and civil society to gather suggestions for the budget. This budget is expected to continue the government's plan for the development and transformation of the country. This will be the third budget presented by the current administration and the second presented by Dr. Singh, who has been the senior finance minister since November 2022. The themes for the previous budgets were a path to recovery, economic dynamism, and resilience for 2022, and resolute in building our one Guyana for 2023. Previous budgets have included funding for housing development, revitalization of the sugar industry, relief for citizens affected by natural disasters, and investments in sectors such as health, infrastructure, education, and energy. As the date for the presentation of Budget 2023 draws closer, many are looking forward to seeing the government's plans for the country's development and growth. Headline News Update will closely follow the budget presentation and provide coverage of key developments as they unfold. In other news, Ghana is poised to benefit from the ongoing trends in the oil and gas sector, as both energy prices and oil production in the country are rising. 
According to a recent Inter-American Development Bank report, prices of specific commodities such as oil and aluminum are projected to remain relatively high through 2024. The oil price is expected to be over $80 per barrel through 2024, which is helping to drive trade surpluses for Guyana. The country has seen a rapid shift from being a net importer of agricultural products and mineral fuels to a net exporter. Turning to a different topic now, the opening ceremony of the Demerara Criminalities and the Law Year 2023 was held earlier today in the compound of the Supreme Court of Judiciary. In delivering remarks, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Anil Nandla said that government would continue to work assiduously to bring speed and efficiency to Ghana's justice system. Delivering the feature remarks, Chancellor of the Judiciary, Honorable Madam Justice Yonet Cummins Edwards, highlighted the milestones and achievements of the judiciary as they seek to modernize the system and enhance access to justice. The motto for the judiciary. The motto for the judiciary has been identified as serving people providing justice. The ceremony marked the beginning of a new year for the judiciary. Don't go away after the break. Nurses in New York City strike over wages and staffing levels, and at least 17 dead in anti-government protests in southern Peru. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. When you need money, and you gotta get it fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Mezu Francois is the chocolate paradise of Guyana. From the moment you enter our stores, you are welcomed by the sweet aroma of Belgian chocolate, pastries and other artisanal treats handmade by our European trained chef. However, Maison Francois is more than just chocolate. We serve lunch, dinner, afternoon tea, and even Sunday morning mimosa brunch. Our convenient location at 133 Thomas Street, Kitty, makes it the perfect place to take that special someone or to take home a little sweetness. Treat yourself with the taste of Paris in the heart of Georgetown. Only at Maison Francois. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Good girl forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hey, hey. This is your fancy vehicle and car is your house? Yes, this is 
my vehicle and actually I'm waiting on my land. I'm actually renting this house for fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollar? You help me? You crazy? You mad? You help me what? Why get the pile? Look, let me show you that light. Come with me. Come on down to Fabulous Homes today. Pay fifty thousand every month for thirty-six months, or until you reach fifty percent of your house costs. Move in after seventy-five percent of the cost has been paid. This is wonderful. Let's go. Sign me up. All right, let me go and dash away your landlord. To explore our home ownership program, check our Facebook page for more information, or come down to our office at Avalon Friendship. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You got to look. Yes. Call us at 227-1380 or 615-8740. Fabulous Homes International Realty. Changing tenants into homeowners. At Fabulous Homes, we bring your dreams to life. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. At least 17 people have been killed in Peru in the latest demonstrations demanding the resignation of President Dina Balarte. Security forces confronted crowds as they tried to overrun an airport. Al Jazeera's Mariana Sanchez has more. Security forces confront protesters in the southern region of Puno. The government says nearly 9,000 demonstrators using homemade weapons and explosives tried to overrun the airport in the city of Juliaca. Security forces responded with live ammunition. It's the deadliest day in more than one month of violence across Peru. I was holding my camera when a police officer asked me to kneel while pointing a gun at me. Then I heard a shot and felt my foot blocked. Then I felt a cramp. I took four steps and I fell on the floor because I couldn't walk. Officials say ambulances were prevented from moving freely. A doctor was killed while assisting the wounded, and a 17-year-old girl was shot and killed in the crossfire. Hospitals are overflowing, with some of the wounded in critical condition. I want to call on the central government. How can we have so many dead people? Tens of thousands of people have marched to demand the resignation of President Dina Boluarte. Markets have been looted, roads blocked and 25 provinces are on strike. Some of the victims were bystanders hit by stray bullets. He was out walking. His friend lives nearby and they went for a walk. Then, as far as we know, a bullet hit him. The government blames former President Pedro Castillo for the month-long unrest. Who announced a coup d'etat from this same government palace? Who is coordinating these demonstrations to seek impunity and to achieve what they did not know how to achieve or were not allowed to achieve? The answer is in jail. Castillo was ousted in December after he tried to shut down Congress and arrest the prosecutor investigating him for alleged corruption. With the violence spiraling, some members of parliament say they are unlikely to give the cabinet a vote of confidence on Tuesday, further deepening the crisis. The government has promised to restore peace, but many Peruvians aren't satisfied, and they say they will take their demonstrations to the capital to demand that President Dina Boluarte step down and new elections be held immediately. Mariana Sanchez, Al Jazeera, Lima. Also in the region, more than 7,000 nurses are on strike at two New York City hospitals, stating that low wages and staffing levels have squeezed the workers. Hospital administrators in the United States say they are struggling to recruit personnel because of a global shortage of qualified nurses. Al Jazeera's Kirsten Saloni reports. It was six in the morning and still dark when 7,000 nurses walked off the job at two private New York hospitals. But it wasn't unexpected. Nurses have been negotiating for four months now. Management offered them pay increases amounting to more than 18 percent over the next three years. But the nurses say this is not about money. It's about safe staffing. And they have the support of the city's labor groups. We are going to be with them today, and as long as it takes to get a fair contract that they deserve, you cannot talk about patient care without talking about how you take care of and how you listen That's to the right. people who provide patient care day That's in right. and day out. Woo! 
Here at Mount Sinai, they've canceled elective surgeries and moved some babies out of the neonatal intensive care unit to other hospitals in anticipation of the service disruptions. Management has called the nurses' actions reckless, but the nurses say they're the ones looking out for patient safety. Nurses say they are routinely asked to care for more patients than is safe, sometimes up to 20 per nurse in emergency rooms where a limit of three is recommended. But California is the only state that mandates nurse to patient ratios. In a year and a half, our vacancy ballooned to 550. That is what is reckless. Nurses say the staffing shortages started even before the coronavirus pandemic, when they were hailed as heroes on the front line. With city hospitals crowded with sick and dying patients, many nurses put others' health before their own. The stress, they say, is causing many to leave their jobs. Seven other hospitals have come to agreements in the last week, but there appears to be public support for the remaining holdouts. They should just get their money. They deserve it. Mm -hmm. Every cent, every dollar. New York's governor has called on both sides to agree to binding arbitration to minimize service disruptions. The nurses say that without guarantees on staffing levels, the crisis will only get worse for them and the patients they care for. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, New York. And internationally, Sri Lanka have been struggling with daily power cuts and shortages of fuel, food and medicine for months. Al Jazeera's Manili Fernandez reports. This is a rare sight in Sri Lanka's present economic crisis. New hires for the railways department. The government had frozen recruitment and lowered the retirement age to 60 across the public sector in order to save money. But some, like Sumedha Somaratna, says this is not the way. If state sector workers retire, their pension has to be paid. A salary when they are working on contract and overtime must also be paid, whereas if they are given an extension, the government will have to pay just one salary. The retirement rule forced over 20,000 workers out of their jobs on December 31st, sending ripples across the country. Dozens of trains were cancelled and the health sector was thrown into chaos, with some hospitals reportedly losing their entire staff of specialists. Meanwhile, government plans to increase electricity prices for a second time in five months have been met with stiff resistance from regulators. If the proposal to increase electricity comes from the cabinet, we are ready to nullify and reject it. At a time we are seeing malnutrition and unemployment and similar problems, we don't believe that is the time for an increase. The government is determined to go ahead with the hike consulting the Attorney General about how it can proceed without the Commission's approval. Rate hikes and painful cuts to government spending are required to secure a $2.9 billion bailout from the International Monetary Fund. Experts say it is a vital lifeline for Sri Lanka as it struggles to confront the worst economic crisis in its history. The IMF guidance is very important to us. Yes, it's going to be very painful for a shorter period, but if we don't go through this uh, painful period, if we don't go through th these decisions and make adjustments and reforms to our fiscal policy, I believe the situation in Sri Lanka would get worse than what we experienced in March, April, May, June uh, periods. President Ronald Vikramasinghe, who previously served as Prime Minister during the height of the economic crisis, is keen to show he's in control, presiding over the first working day of the new year. For decades, successive governments have implemented populist measures such as subsidizing fuel and electricity, keeping interests low and filling the public sector with political appointees. All of this has created a massive financial burden. And reducing that expenditure as part of a series of conditions to secure an IMF bailout is not proving easy. Minel Fernandez, Al Jazeera, Colombo. And that is it for today's regional and international news. Here now is your 3 weather forecast.
that is all for this edition of Channel 2's Headline News Update. Tune in on Wednesday to VM for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.